Let's turn now to the mayor of Washington, D.C., Muriel Bowser. Mayor Bowser, I know you've said that uh, these acts uh, with these protesters being moved on like this by the federal police were shameful. Um, and it makes the job of the police harder. I want to hear more about that. But also, were they assaulted by police? Were the rights of these citizens violated? Well, Mika, what, what we know is I uh, had to impose a 7 p.m. curfew last night in Washington, D.C., uh, to make sure that people who were there to peaceably protest could do that, um, but also so that we could maintain safety uh, in neighborhoods across the D.C., uh, across D.C. Uh, and what we saw was before the curfew time, uh, munitions were released on uh, people um, who didn't seem uh, to have provoked uh, any attack. And so that, that is very concerning to us. Uh, and we continue uh, to encourage people to, uh, to exercise their First Amendment rights peacefully. Um, but we need people to go home uh, at the curfew time. Mayor Bowser, Willie Geist, good to have you on this morning. Did the White House alert you Hi, or your police department that the President of the United States was going to leave the White House, walk through Lafayette Square, and go to the church last night? Uh, after the, the president's comments, Willie, uh, on the, the governor's call, uh, we had a flurry of activity around uh, making sure that federal policing activities uh, were focused on federal properties and federal purposes. Uh, and my police department briefed the attorney general uh, to make sure that they knew that D.C. police would be policing D.C. streets. Uh, and at no time did we assist um, the federal police with the president's movements. And so you don't feel a responsibility from your police department to handle the president's movement is the bottom line. So they did not need to reach out to you for that. I'm sorry. Did they reach out to when the us president, about the when president's the pre movements? When the president moves, is that the responsibility of the, the your police department in Washington? In other words, you leave that to the feds. When he, no, when he moves around the city, we have a special uh, detail that supports traffic management. Uh, and that, that happens on a daily basis with the president's movements. We're in a special situation in Washington, D.C. Uh, we are the nation's capital, uh, and we support our federal partners at the Secret Service and the U.S. Park Police on demonstrations all the time, uh, and they support us all the time. Uh, and so yesterday, we were very focused on D.C. D.C. police, um, policing D.C. streets and the feds policing uh, federal properties. Uh, and while we are, we're very concerned about uh, any time that peaceful protesters can't exercise their rights, but we do want to emphasize that we need people to go home uh, at the curfew time. And so our police chief will continue to um, be in touch uh, with our federal partners so that we better understand understand on what their plans are. At the root of all this, as you know very well, Mayor Bowser, is not just the death of George Floyd, but what has happened to so many other African-American men, particularly, but African-American men and women across this country in the hands of police. So what do you see? We were talking to Governor Whitmer about this a few minutes ago. What do you see as a concrete change in your department that could be implemented so that all of this sound, all of this fury, everything we're seeing in these streets amounts to something in the end. Well, that's certainly a conversation that we will continue to have in Washington, D.C. Um, we have been very progressive and aggressive in um, supporting good community and police relations, um, including having all of our officers wear body-worn camera. We have an independent police complaints board. Uh, we work with our legislature uh, to uh, report police stops in the District of Columbia. We have de-escalation uh, training. Uh, so that our officers know how to better handle situations without force. And so while we're not um, perfect, uh, we work every day uh, to support our communities uh, 
and keep our community safe. Police and communities need each other. We need good policing in all of our neighborhoods. We need good police officers. Uh, and the police need communities to be able to trust them um, so that we can work together to keep our community safe. Uh, and that's, that's what we want to emphasize. We're all outraged here in Washington, pol police included, uh, at what we saw in Minneapolis and what we have seen in brutal incidents around our country. Uh, and we all have to work together uh, for that change. We also know that that means um, building building blocks of opportunity in our communities. We've seen that with um, the disproportionate impact of COVID on our communities. We see it with um, police brutality against black Americans. Uh, and we have to call it out and we see it and we have to fix it. And we need justice. Uh, we need justice in the George Floyd case uh, and many others. And that's what people want to see. Gene Robinson has a question. Gene? Uh, Mayor Bowser, you are, are uniquely uh, accustomed to overlapping police jurisdictions because you have so many, there are so many police Indeed. forces that operate with, within the District of Columbia, you know, Park Police and Fort Service, and uh, nine or ten of them, I think, um, uh, or perhaps more by now. But you're not accustomed to to seeing the the U.S. military act as a police force in the District of Columbia. Yet the president arguably does have power to do that that he wouldn't have in in a, in, in the in the states. Um, have you had any? discussions with um, federal officials about the deployment of, of troops potentially in Washington uh, and and what is your reaction to that? Uh, yes, we did, Jane, and you've called out uh, what we've been talking about, I've talked about on your air before, why D.C. needs to be the 51st state, uh, and that's so important that the area outside of the federal enclave become the 51st state where we are autonomous um, from the federal government and federal government interference. And the federal government would police uh, a smaller uh, federal district around the White House and Capitol and all the monuments and memorials. So th these incidents call into to stark um, need why uh, statehood for Washington, D.C. Uh, is so important. And yes, we had many conversations yesterday with federal authorities so that we are, I push back very hard on them on trying to encroach on the home rule of Washington, D.C. Uh, they can, um, and as the president has said, use military forces uh, for military purposes. And we have to, uh, for federal purposes, I should say. We haven't seen any military, active duty military in the district overnight. Uh, and so I, I want to emphasize that point. While they said that they were bringing the military, we haven't seen the military. Uh, we certainly have seen uh, a the police forces that we work with all the time, the DEA and the Park Police and the FBI. Uh, and we asked um, for National Guard troops to help us um, police the downtown, to help us with traffic management in the downtown area. So while we, we think that those uses are appropriate, bringing in the active duty military against Americans for any reason is inappropriate. All right, Mayor Muriel Bowser, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your service and hope to have you back here soon to keep us posted. And in just a few moments, the mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Bottoms, will be our guest. Live reports from the country's two largest cities after another day of unrest and at times violence. We'll see what officials are doing to get a tighter grip on things. Morning Joe is back in a moment. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.